So here's our general program for analyzing analyzing recursive algorithms. So it's going to look a little bit like what we had for the other for iterative algorithms, but it's it's going to have recurrence relations in it instead of other kinds of expressions. So one, what what do we do first? We identify input size. Right, that's always the first thing we do. We always want to understand, you know, how how are we representing the size of an input? So two, we want to identify basic operation. All right, so what is the thing? What is the, the execution uh, count that we're trying to track as we do this? Three, now we want to set up a recurrence relation that expresses how many times the basic operation executes uh, as a function of n. So now we want to set up a recurrence relation. Recurrence relation. And now setting up a recurrence relation is, is not too hard. There's a little bit of art to it. You know, it takes a little bit of getting used to kind of thinking about what needs to go where. When we actually do algorithms, especially with divide and conquer algorithms, uh, we'll get good at this. For now, you know, assume that the recurrence relation is given to you and then compute step four, which is you solve the recurrence relation, or at least you determine its order of growth. So four, solve, or at least determine order of growth. find big theta, the recurrence relation. Okay, so that's our, that's our program, right? It's very, very similar to the, to the iterative algorithms, right? The only real difference is that here we are thinking about these in terms of recurrence relations uh, rather, than, uh, rather than just general mathematical expressions. All right, so I, there's no general way of solving recurrence relations. Uh, there, there are many different techniques you can use um, you can find all kinds of information about this online uh, or, or in the mathematical companion that I provide with the course. Um, the, the textbook also has some information in the appendices. Um, all I'm going to go over in this class is this repeated substitution idea um, because it's, it's a decent place to start. Um, and it, it applies to a pretty wide class of recurrence relations. But if you wanted to do more complicated ones, you would have to use characteristic functions or something along those lines. So here's the basic idea of repeated substitution with recurrence relations. So suppose you're given a, re a recurrence relation that looks like this. So I've got t of n equals some function times t of some function of n Right, so t, I'll put another block in there, plus some function of n. Right, so this is the this is the basic format you're going to see. So here is the here. Oh, and then also you need to have some kind of initial condition. So there's always going to be a t of n zero equals something. Right, there's always going to be something there. There's there will there will you, you can never have a recurrence relation that doesn't tell you where it terminates. Right, that's that's a critical piece of this. It's not a complete recurrence relation without that. So here's what I do. Here's, here's my recipe for solving these things, um, which, will, which will get you a lot of mileage for a lot of these, a lot of these relations. So one, I, I rewrite the, the uh, recurrence relation. Relation. And I replace all of the boxes, uh, or sorry, I replace all the ends with x's, right? So I replace n with x. So I say, what is t of x now, right? And now all of these are going to be functions of x. t of block plus block, where now block is a function of x. All right. So now, using this t of x, I work out a new expression for this. Okay, so, so 2 using t of x work out an expression expression for t of block and we're going to do lots of examples of these so don't don't worry if the abstraction here makes you panic a little bit you know come back to this video rewatch it once you've seen several examples uh, and and these things will make more sense okay so now we want to work out an expression for t of block once we have that so three plug that back into the original uh, recurrence relation. So plug new, new expression 
back into original expression, or back into the original recurrence relation. All right, so now what we've essentially done is one step of recursion. So we did the complete analysis to see what happens after one step. Um, and then we do this several more times. So number four is we repeat this. We repeat two and three, two, two to four or more times, two and three, several more times, until a pattern of some kind emerges. Right? When you see the pattern, then we're going to kind of stop. And so, so here's an example of what, the, what a pattern might look like. So I'm going to write t of n equals uh, some function of n and k. There's going to be a bunch of abstract functions of n and k. Some function of n and k times t of some other function of n and k. So I'll call that function g, n and k, plus some other function of n and k. Okay, so this is... This is what we're looking for. We're looking for a way to express t of n in terms of some function of n and k, where k represents the number of recursive calls so far. Okay, with this, k is the number of recursive calls so far. Then what we want to do is connect this expression, right? Connect the pattern back down to the to the initial condition or the recursion base case, if you want. And so I call this the anchoring step, anchor. And literally what we're trying to do is answer the question, how many recursive calls do we have to make before we reach the base case as a function of n? So anchor, uh, connect to base case. Right, or the initial condition is the other term for this. So the initial condition is the mathematical term for the, 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 the point that we know, like the t of n0 equals c, or initial condition. Okay, so connect to the base case. And literally what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve the following expression, right? So solve this, solve this, t of g, of n and k equals t of n0. Right, what is this saying? Well, t of n0 is the, you know, the thing on the right side of this equals sign. That's the amount of time it takes to compute the base case. And we're trying to ask, how many recursive calls do we have to make before we get there? Right, so solve this for k. Solve for k, okay? And so literally what that means is g of n of k, n and k, solve that, uh, set that equal to n zero and solve that, right? So, th so this ends up being the, the anchoring step. So once you have that, plug that back into the, to the uh, expression you got in four and complete, right? And that, and that sh you should be able to use that expression to eliminate all your k's and get it as a function of n. So six, plug this back into pattern ex uh, expression from step four and eliminate k's. Right, try to get it as an expression only of n, right? If k is still in there, it's you're not done, right? There's still some simplification that you need to you need to do. So this is my program, right? This is this is not it's not a particularly simple thing to do, but it is a straightforward thing to do. And it and it you you don't have to do too many of these steps before you can rule this out and say, nope, this isn't gonna work. I've got to go find a more sophisticated technique. And I promise that all of the problems on the homework can be solved by this technique, all the recur recurrence relation problems on the homework. Um, so what I encourage you to do is watch several videos where I show you how this technique works, actually, you know, in practice, and then come back to this 
and convince yourself that what I'm doing as I work through those examples is I'm following this program. 